start to soar and you'll live as you've never lived before awfully gentle music shall surround Closing in around you, open up your mind, let your fantasies unwind, in this darkness which you know you cannot fight, the darkness of the music of the night. Let your mind start a journey through a strange new world. Leave all thoughts of the world you knew before. Let your soul take you where you long to be. Falling, sweet intoxication. Touch me, trust me, savor each sensation. Let the dream begin, let your darker side give in to the power of the music that I write the power of the music of the night you alone can make my song take flight help me I never thought Hyena the Sensual, the cruel and unspeakably plain, but maybe gave a glimmer of potential, if aligned with my vision and brain. I know that your powers of retention are as wet as a warthog's backside, but thick as you are. Pay attention! My words are a matter of pride. It's clear from your vacant expressions. The lights are not all long upstairs. But we're talking kings and successions. Even you can't be caught unawares. So prepare for a chance of a lifetime. Be prepared for sensational news. A shining new era is tiptoeing nearer. And where do we feature? Just listen to teacher. I know it sounds so... and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all, it's Jeep's Variety Show! And now, here's your host, Jeep! Dum, ba da 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 yeah, 
ha 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 Hello everybody, Jeep here of Jeep Variety Show. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're doing well personally. I'm doing pretty good myself. There's been some tiring days in between. I couldn't put up the uh, thumbnail that I usually put up, but hey, you know, that's life. Life gets tiresome and whatnot. I'm going to take a swig right now on my tea, so give me a sec. Uh, okay. Um... So, we got a good show for you here today. Going to continue on with Hamlet. I hope maybe we can get through a lot of it today. Going to sing some anime songs. Just have an all good around, all around good lax stream today. So, before we get on to that, let's, uh, I got to take out my, my, I don't need this headset right now. Boy, it gets hot in the head. Uh, let's see what's in the news today. Well, um, <laughs> So, anyway, as I was saying, let's see what's in the news today. Well, a new cult began. They called themselves the Plugger Buggers. Yeah. They boast self-restraint, self-respect, self-restraint, you know, that you can be really strong through their initiation process. And the initiation process to join this cult requires you to, um, well, to put it in layman's terms, and I mean that very literal terms, it requires you to stick your thumb up your butthole. And not remove it for 24 hours. That's why they call themselves the Pluggers Buggers. Evidently, if you can pass this task, you qualify for the cult. I don't know what it is they do down there. I don't think it's worth it because for the first 12 hours of the 24 hours, you're supposed to walk, you need to walk around in public, right? With the thumb up your butthole. <laughs> Naturally, the police were called in to handle such disgusting public showcasings of buttness. However, the first set of people who were being initiated were not arrested. Why? Because the cops showed their thumb of approval. Because they were part of the cult as well. And then this went all the way up to the mayor. But the mayor was part of the cult as well. Needless to say, this butt phenomena had to spread on and on. Then it got to the highest level of government. Where then they put a stop to it. So now the cult is no longer allowed to do that in public. However, for some reason, all the people who were arrested, they were fined for that. They were fined and arrested, but they were released, and the cult still goes on. They just got rid of the initiation process. Or have they? It's creepy to think about. It's scary, and it's stupid, and it's unfortunate. And, uh, well, ultimately, I honestly think they were just doing that for laughs. This sounds like a, a dickish cult, if you ask me, but... Yeah, that, that story's gonna be ongoing, uh, unfortunately. Just, they all can't be good stories now, can they? Mm. A celebrity singer who, was in, who is in love, or was, in love with his voice so freaking much that he would get angry at anybody who would criticize his great voice. His, yeah, 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 look at me, I'm a singer, blah, 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 blah. And, um... Anyone who would criticize his voice, he would, especially particularly critics, right? Because they would write their reviews. He didn't. He, he felt he was being above it all by not wasting his time by going to every little individual person, so on and so forth, belittling them. But he'll belittle critics. And anytime a critic would criticize such voice in the in the magazines or wherever they post their the critique shit, uh, the singer would go visit them personally and scream at the top of his lungs and yell and they're like, I'm, I'm the best singer of all time. Lovely, 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 lovely. And then the critic would eventually change their opinion because he was so noisy. <laughs> now, I don't know how he gets away with that so much. Being, It's just so bold and stupid and just arrogant. But, you know, he, he's beginning away with it until he came up to another person who, who criticized him. Not necessarily a critic, but well-renowned, another singer in question. Then he screamed at that person, and then that singer beat him to death. The problem is, this singer that beat that singer to death is an even more obnoxious singer and an even worse singer than the one he killed. But he had mob ties. That's why he's not arrested. So, instead of yelling in the faces of his critics, he would beat the living shit out of them, or beat them to death. And that's probably why he has very little critics. Fortunately, though, in his most recent concert, he blew the shit out of his vocals. So he can't sing for, like, a long time. He, he really went nuts. So, maybe it's good news. Um, 
hopefully he never recovers. You know that that's the that's the hope. That's the dream, right? We hope that that motherfucker never recovers. <laughs> Hey, Bong Gong! Yes, showbiz is dangerous. You gotta be careful. Careful. <laughs> How you doing today, Bong? I hope you're doing well. So you know, there you have it. Let's hope that that guy never recovers. So let's wrap up today with a nice, kind of funny story. So there's this woman who, if she smells the back of your head. That night, you will have a very pleasant sleep, no matter what. You will sleep for the solid, beautiful eight hours, or, or whatever it is that you need for your sleep, and that's that. She offers this for free for the first customer, first time. Oh, hold on, let me see. Bongog. Man, I happy. Six followers away from 50. Way to go! Wait, you're a VTuber? I had no idea! I thought you were just, you know, someone who watches VTubers. Oh, I gotta check your channel out now. Or a streamer, at the very least. I'll, I'll check you out. Um, anyway, so the woman... Back onto the story. The story. So she smells the back of your, anyone's head, then they fall asleep. So I won't be responding to the chat um, until I finish this bit of the monologue. Um, she smells the back of your head, and you fall asleep. You have a great. You don't fall asleep right there, right? You get a great sleep at the end of the night, right? Naturally, the government and their cohorts and their researchers want to investigate this phenomenon for self gain or try to expose her for a fraud and whatnot. And she was arrested, and they told her to give them the. They told they demanded that she give up her secret. And, of course, she just told them straight to their faces. My nose is what I use to transfer the feelings of love for myself, and I have it touch the part that is the most restless of the human body, the mind. And that's how she does it, just by transference of love and care. And made a little bit of magic. You know, the magic of care. And, um, of course, they thought it was bullshit, but the researchers, the experimentation, she wasn't prodded badly. Fortunately, she had a good fawn to keep her safe. But they didn't find anything uh, unusual about her or unique, just an ordinary woman. So they let her go. And then she resumed her clinic, sniffing the back of people's heads and giving them good rest. And it continued perfectly. I'll take her word for it. She just cares so much that when she smells you, she transfers that love and calms your mind. The most restless, most crazy part of the human body. Well, I'm not a human, but in my world, there are plenty of things with brains. So brains need a shutting up every now and then. And um, she's getting really popular, though, ever since this uh, the news caught wind of her. So um, she always offers the first sniff for free, but then after that, you have to pay. She does have, but she doesn't charge a lot. I think it's only like five or ten bucks, something like that. <laughs> so yeah, keep going, smelling head clinic woman. Yeah. Okay, that's it for the news today. Let's see. Bong is now. Let's read Bong's comments. Bong, uh, Bong Gog is in the um. Is in, the, is in the chat today. So, see, Bongog says, also a streamer. I lob a follow, went there, and was fall. So, oh, someone's fangirling me. Man, I don't know how to feel. Someone's fangirling you. <laughs> and yes, still didn't debut yet. Ah, okay, you're a ghost VTuber that works at the afterlife. Cool, cool. As in, will you go after you die? Well, you know, sure, yeah. I, I imagine that's what afterlife means. Unless, of course, there's a. That's the wrong definition. Anyway, that's it for the news today, folks. Let's move on to the main stage, shall we? Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Ah, let me sit in my my lovely chair. I'm glad to hear you're doing well, Bong Gog. I hope any of my other viewers, or if there are lurkers about, I hope you're doing well, too. I hope you're doing well, as well. So, today we were going to continue on with more Hamlet, but I think I want to kick off, and since Hamlet kind of strained my voice a bit, because it's a lot of talking, it's a lot of performing, it's a lot of voices, I'm going to kick off with a few songs. Yeah? So that way we can get, because I do the songs at the end, but I think it's good we do the songs right now. So, we'll do a few of them now, and then a few more at the end. And I said in my tweets, we'll be doing anime songs, so let's not dilly down and just get right to that. There we go. So, this lovely little background I got going here. He 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 he. Boom. Uh -huh. I want to redo this song. I mean, I did a good job the first time, but of course, I was really tired on that day. That was the karaoke, the 
my affiliate stream where uh, celebration where I had like all like a lot of my guests come by and it was fucking spectacular. I loved it. But of course, this was the last song of the night that I sang, and my voice naturally wasn't at peak condition at the time. So watch your ears, folks. I'm putting the microphone down. There we go. So as a result, it turned out good, just not great in my opinion. So I want to. Mm. I want to sing again. Feels sorry. Let's see, where was that supposed to be? <laughs> Feel sorry. It's all good, Bongog. <coughs> you mind if I just call you Bong or what do you want to be called? Uh, just tell me what, how you like to be called. I, I would love to get uh, your pronunciation right and everything. So drop that in there. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Um, bongo. Bong oh, bongo. There okay, bongo. Perfect. Okay, lovely. Thank you, bongo. All right, so let's get this first song underway. And you know what? I'm going to pour myself some tea right now because I have it in a thermos. And these thermoses keep it hot for up to eight hours. And it is still piping hot after eight hours. That's how good these thermoses are. So I'm going to pour it now into my open glass and let it cool off so that by the time I finish this song, it'll be cool enough to drink. There we go. Okay, so let's get this party started right. So glad you could join me today, Bongo. Good to have you. Yeah, I see you pop in from time to time. Very pleasant fella. I hope I got fella right. That's usually a, a he terminology. <laughs> I'm sorry if, if um, I got the pronoun wrong. I'm sorry, Bongo. I apologize. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Don't mention it. <laughs> I won't. Okay, let me. I gotta get my lyrics up. <laughs> come on, come on. There you are. Okay. Got that going. <laughs> it's he. I'm from a time when gender wasn't much of an issue. <laughs> right? Same here. Same here. I don't really mind. I don't mind it actually at all myself. So, coolio. Coolio. But I know it's a topic. It's a subject now. So, I must address it and whatnot. As time permits. And all of that. But good to hear. Good to hear. Old gang indeed. All right. So I don't know how many of you know this song. Or, uh, uh, yeah, anyone in the chat. You know what I mean. The, any lurkers or whatnot. I don't know how many know this song, but I like this one. So let me get everything ready. I'm almost ready, folks. Almost ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is. There we go. Okay. Let's start this. Set my old trap in endless night. Sounds like tiny new night. More daughter, naika, don't you dare to know? 
before. Cause I don't know all things I believe. Can teach to me cat night cry he be. Look at us and I jock y'all don't know where to go. You know that hope is fake in this world. And despair is the only truth I've got. Yami o kiri saite. Ken kai swash nai wai mas bleeding the air and I melancholy. Ken kai gai ter hak yosuns and because it will never end. Jepri and aqua. Zeti keskilia awa. Come now and I the suffering world and live on a union run affair. Who put on the manti ram one mem? They say they are late, take a defense, mones pre. Who can be put on the pondwa? Who are the plan to move the pondwa? Who is set putin verite? Se gorge to your toton, qui voudra me faire? And moi, comme quoi, comme qui, comme si, comme ça, ça ne son Oh Dieu, pourquoi cette vie infernale continue jusqu'à ma finale? J'espère ma liberté. The bones pack when past your hands, my tongue to second a tap beta. No se manton do the bones pack when past your hands, my tongue to second a tap beta. No se manton do the bones pack when past your hands, my tongue to second a tap beta. No se manton do pass on me say do cop on secondi. They prove the disson to kun qua. Yen kai qua stai. That's my last scream scared and I reality. No pain, no gain. The toy cost. And if really there is an end, I cross the mountain. Apocalypse, I'm not unknown. Coward and I, the suffering world. Yes, I did it! Whew! That's a tough one. English, Japanese, and French mixed into that song. That was from Blood Sea. Spiral was the name of the song. Whew! Okay. Let's do another song, and then we'll go into Shakespeare. Give me a sec, folks. I gotta just stretch. <laughs> I'm back, I'm back. So um let's uh let's go to a different background. Let's go over here. And uh oh what kind of background do we want this time? Uh let's go. Uh, that one? Nah. I don't know. Yeah, that one actually works. We going lightning. Woo! Okay. Let's do another. Not this time, ads. <laughs> You've been muted, you sick, stupid ad. Gosh, I hate you. I hate you, stupid ad, so much. 
Okay, anyway. Here's another song. Let's see how I do on this one this time. This is another tough one. Another tough one. Here we go. Die, Joe, fool. Oh, hold on. It's a. It's it's that place, right? Hold on. Give me a second. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. No, no. Stop. 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 There we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's much better. Okay. Daichi wo fumishimete Kimi wa mezamate yuku Tenshi no ho ho emite Tsure dashite Donkoku do demo Hitori janai sa Umarete kita koto ni Kanarazu imi ga aru Yashi sasa ni Michi afurete ru Aori hoshi ni Arigato You can smile again Taiyo abite you can fly away. Sekai wa kimi no kagayaki no matteru. Daichi wa fumishimete. Kimi wa mezamate yuku. Tenshi no ho ho emide. Tsure doshite! You can smile. Hajimari wa itsu demo oso kunai sa. Nando demo dachi agare. Sai go made o kira me nai sa. Yari tsutsu keru koto ni kanarazu imi ga aru. You just try again. Yami o nukete, you just fly away. Mirai wa itsu mo boku tachi o matteru. Ozoro kake nukete, unabara koe ke yute. Tenshi no nagaki isu, tsukamaete. Mada dare mo mita koto na sai ke tekai he. Tobi da so o ashita Daichi wo fumishimete Kimi wa mezamate yuku Tenshi no ho ho emite Tsure doshite Awanari bo ken ni dekake yo o Itsu made mo doko made mo Ah, nagarero ti umami da Yuki ni kaete yuku Tenshi no hana hiroge Mai agare Kanashimi mo itami mo tsumoki ande Tsuyu konare Washita! Daichi wo fumishimete Kimi wa mezamete yuku Tenshi no ho ho emite Tsure doshite Hajimari wa itsu demo osoku nai sa Nando demo Nando demo Nando demo Tachi agare Da bum ba da bum ba da Woo hoo Whew Okay 
on the Shakespeare. And the temperature is perfect on my tea. Lovely. Okay. There we are. I apologize to the folks who maybe would find this a little bit snooze and adducing, but I love Shakespeare. It's so much fun. Okay. Let me open up my script now. My script. Nah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Where are you? Here we go. Do, do, do. So, where do we last leave off? Let me see. Oh, I remember where we last left off. I remember. I remember. I remember now. Oh, no, no, not lay here, tease. Not yet. Excuse me. Here we go. So we left off with Hamlet saying. So you know what? I'm just going to redo this part right here because it's kind of cool. And I think I didn't do the best delivery on that time, so I'm going to start over again. So Hamlet is watching an army march. I'm just going to go right in. How all occasion, this is Hamlet saying this, he's my voice, my normal voice. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast, no more. Sure, he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not the capability and godlike reason to fuss in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion, or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, I thought which quartered hath but one part wisdom, and ever three parts coward. I do not know why yet I live to say this things to do, sith I have cause and will and strength and means to do't. <sighs> Examples gross as earth exert me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit, with divine ambition, puffed, makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an eggshell. <sighs> Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honor's at the stake. How stand I, then, that have a father killed, a mother stained? Excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep, while to my shame I see the imminent death of twenty thousand men that, for a fantasy and trick of fame, go to their graves like beds. Fight! For a plot, whereon the numbers cannot try the cause, which is not tomb enough and continent to hide the slain. Oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. Now let's go to scene five, Elsinore, a room in the castle. Enter the Queen, Horatio, and a gentleman. Here's the Queen. I will not speak with her. Here's the gentleman. She is importunate. Indeed, distract. Her mood will need be pitied. What would she have? She speaks much of her father, says she hears there's tricks in the wind, and hems and beats her heart, spurns, envious at straws, speaks things in doubt that carry but half sense. Her speech is nothing. 
Yet the unshaped use of it doth move the hearers to collection. They aim at it, and botch the words up fit to their own thoughts, which, as her winks and nods and gestures yield them, indeed would make one think there might be thought, though nothing sure, yet much unhappily. T'were good she were spoken with, for she may strew dangerous conjectures in ill-breeding minds. Ah, Bongo, back, helping your mother. Bongo says he is back. How he was helping his mom wind down by cleaning the house at night. Oh, that's nice. How nice. Here, here. Give it up for Bongo, people. <sighs> All right. The queen now, after hearing the gentleman's reasoning. Let her come in. The gentleman exits. To my sick soul, as sin's true nature is, each toy seems prologue to some great amiss. So full of artless jealousy is guilt, it spells itself in fearing to be spilt. Here is Ophelia. Ophelia will do a slightly higher pitched voice, like, Ah, where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? How now, Ophelia? How should I your true love know from another one? By his cockleback and staff and his sandals shoon. Alas, sweet lady, what imports this song? Say you, nay, pray you mark. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head a grass-green turf, at his heels a stone. Nay, but Ophelia, pray you mark. White his shroud as the mountain snow. Enter King Claudius. Alas, look here, my lord. Larded all with sweet flowers which be wept to the grave did go with true love showers. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God dilled you. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know not. We, Lord, we know what we are, but know not what we may be. God be at your table. Conceit upon your father. Well, no, <clears throat> conceit upon her father. Pray you, lest have no words of this, but when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning bedtime, and I am maid at your window to be your valentine. Then up he rose and donned his clothes and duped the chamber door. Let in the maid that out the maid never departed more. Pretty Ophelia. Indeed, la. Without an oath, I'll make an end on't. By gifts and by saint charity, a lack and five for shame, young men will do if they come to t. By cock they are to blame, quoth she, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wed. So would I had done by yonder son, and thou hast not come to my bed. How loth has she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient, but I cannot choose but weep to think they would lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall know of it, and so I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night. Follow her close. Give her good watch, I pray you. The king said that to Horatio. Horatio exits. This is the poison of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude. When sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. First her father slain, next your son gone. And he, most violent author of his own just remove, the people muddied, thick, and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers, for good Polonius's death. And we have done but greenly in hugger-mugger to enter him. 
poor Ophelia, divided from herself and her fair judgment, without the which we are pictures or mere beasts. Last, and as much containing as all these, her brother is in secret, come from France, feeds on his wonder, keeps himself in clouds, and wants not buzzers to infect his ear with pestilent speeches of his father's death, wherein necessity of matter beggared. Will nothing stick our person to a rein in our in ear and ear? Oh, my dear Gertrude, this, like to a murdering piece in many places, gives me superfluous death. A noise is heard within. Alack, what noise is this? Where are my Switzers? Let them guard the door. Enter a gentleman. What is the matter? Save yourself, my lord. The ocean, overpeering of his list, eats not the flats with more impetuous, impetuous haste than young Laertes in a riotous head overbears your offices. The rabble call him lord, and as the as the world were now but to begin, antiquity forgot, custom not known, the ratifiers and props of every word, they cry, choose we, Laertes shall be king. Caps, hands, and tongues applaud, Applaud it to the clouds. Laertes shall be king. Laertes shall be king. How cheerfully on the false trail they cry. Oh, this is counter, you false Danish dogs. A noise within. <sighs> Here's the king. The doors are broke. Enter Laertes, armed, and Danes following. <laughs> Okay, I know I gave Laertes kind of a squeaky voice last time with such been such a while. I think I'll give him a different voice this time. I'll make him like a hey, sounds like that kind of rasp, kind of kind of rascally like that. Here's Laertes. Where is this king, sir? Stand you all without. Here are some the Danes are saying this. Stand you all without, Danes. Let no let's come in. I pray you, give me. Oh, no, okay. Once again, this is what the Danes said. Okay, Laertes says, "Where is this king?" Sirs, stand you all without. Hear the Danes. No, let's come in. I pray you, give me leave. We will, we will. They retire without the door. I thank you. Keep the door. O oh, thou vile king, give me my father. Calmly, good Laertes. That drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard, cries cuckold to my father, brands the harlot, even here between the chaste, unsmirched brow of my true mother. What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. There's such divinity doth hedge a king, that treason can but peep to what it would, acts little of his will. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed? Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How come he dead? How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. To hell allegiance, vows to the blackest devil, conscience and grace to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. To this point I stand, that both the worlds I give to negligence, let come what comes. Only I'll be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Who shall stay you? My will, not all the world. And for my means, I'll husband them so well, they shall go far with little. Good, Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father's death, it's writ in your revenge that sweepstake. You will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser? None but his enemies. Will you know them, then? To his good friends, thus wide I'll ope my arms, and, like the kind life-rendering pelican, repass them with my blood. Why, now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman. That I am guiltless of your father's death and am most sensibly in grief for it, it shall as level to your judgment peer as day does to your eye. 
The Danes are saying this. Let her come in! How now? What noise is that? Re-enter Ophelia, fantastically dressed with straws and flowers. Oh, heat! Dry up my brains! Tears seven times salt burn out the sense and virtue of mine eye. By heaven, thy madness shall be paid by weight, till our scale turn the beam. O oh, Rose of May, dear maid, kind sister, sweet Ophelia! Oh heavens, it's possible a young maid's wits should be as mortal as an old man's life. Nature is fine in love, and where tis fine, it sends some precious instance of itself after the thing it loves. Here's Ophelia. They bore him bare-faced on the bier. Hey, no, nanny, nanny, hey, nanny. And on his grey rain many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. Hast thou thy wits, and didst persuade revenge? It could not move thus. You must sing, down a down, and you call him a down a. Oh, how the wheel becomes it! It is the false steward that stole his master's god, that stole his master's daughter. This nothing, this nothing's more than matter. There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray, love, remember. And there is pansies, that's for thoughts. A document in madness. Thoughts and remembrance fitted. There's fennel for you and columbines. There's rue for you and here's some for me. We may call it herb of grace, O oh Sundays. Oh, you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. Say he made a good end. For Bonnie sweet, Robin is all my joy. Thought and affliction, passion, hell itself, she turns to favor and to prettiness. And will not he come again, and will not he come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He never will come again. His beard was as white as snow. All flakes and was his pole. He is gone, he is gone. And we cast away moan. God have mercy on his soul. And all of and of all Christian souls, I pray God, God be with ye. Do you see this? Oh, God! Laertes, I must commune with your grief, or, your, or you deny me right. Go but apart. Make choice of whom your wisest friends do will, and they shall hear and judge twixt you and me. If by direct or by collateral hand they find us touched, we will. Our kingdom give, our crown, our life, and all that we call ours to you in satisfaction. But if not... Be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Let this be so. His means of death, his obscure burial. No trophy, sword, nor hatchment, or his bones. No noble right, nor formal ostentation. Cry to be heard, as twere from heaven to earth, that I must call into question. So you shall. And where the offense is let, and where the offense, and where the offense is, let the great axe fall. I pray you, go with me. Scene six, another room in the castle. Horatio, he talks like this. I am Horatio, so there's Horatio and a servant. What are they that would speak with me? Here's a servant. Sailors, sir. They say they have letters for you. Let them come in. I do not know from what part of the world I should be greeted if not from Lord Hamlet. Here's the first sailor. God bless you, sir. Let him bless thee, too. He shall, sir, and, and, and please him. There's a letter for you, sir. 
it comes from the ambassador that was bound for England. If your name be Horatio, as I am let to know it is. <clears throat> Horatio, read the letter. Horatio, when thou shalt have overlooked this, give these fellows some means to the king. They have letters for him. Ere we were two days old at sea, a private, a, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor, valor, and in the grapple I boarded them. On the instant they got clear of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy. But they knew what they did. I am too a good tur I, I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much haste as thou wouldest fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear that will make thee dumb. Yet are they much too light for the bore of the matter. These good fellows will bring thee will bring thee where I am. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine, Hamlet. Come, I will give you way for these for these your let for these your letters, and do it the speedier, that you may direct me to him from whom you bought from whom you brought them. They exit. Scene seven. Another room in the castle. Ooh, this is the part where um, Laertes and the king conspired to, to murder Hamlet. <clears throat> oh, that's good stuff. Time to pour myself some more tea. Okay, here we go. Now must your conscience, now must your conscience, my acquittance seal, and you must put me in your heart for friend. Sith you have heard, and with a knowing ear, that we, that that he which hath your noble father slain pursued my life. It well appears. But tell me, why you proceeded not against these feats, so crimeful and so capital in nature, as by your safety, wisdom, all things else, you mainly were stirred up? Oh, for two special reasons, which may to you, perhaps, seem much unsinewed, but yet to me they are strong. The queen, his mother, lives almost by his looks. And for myself, my virtue, or my plague, be it either which, she's so conjunctive to my life and soul, that, as the star moves, not but in his sphere, not but in his sphere, I could not but by her. The other motive, why to a public count I might not go, is, why to, the, to a public count I might not go, is the great love the general, the general gender bear him, who, dipping all his faults in their affection, would like the spring that turneth wood to stone convert his jives to graces, so that my arrows, too slightly timbered for so loud a wind, would have re would have reverted to my bow again and not where I had aimed them. And so have a noble I and so have I a noble father lost a sister driven into desperate terms whose worth if praises may go back again stood challenger on mount of all the age for her perfections, but my revenge will come, break not your sleeps for that. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we can't that we can let our beard be shook with danger, and think it pastime. You shortly shall hear from shall you shortly shall hear more. I loved your father, and we love ourselves, and that I hope will teach you to imagine. Enter a messenger. How now? What news? Here's a messenger. Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. This to your majesty, this to the queen. From Hamlet? Who brought them? Sailors, my lord, they say. I saw them not. They were given me by Claudio. He received them of him that brought them. Laertes, you shall hear them. Leave us. The messenger leaves. The king is now reading the letters. 
High and mighty, you shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your knight, see your kingly eyes. When I shall, first asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasions of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. What should this mean? Are all the rest come back? Or is it some abuse and no such thing? Know you the hand? Tis Hamlet's character. Naked? And in a postscript here he says, alone. Can you advise me? I am lost in it, my lord. But let him come! It warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth. Thou diest thou! If it be so, Laertes, uh, as how should it be so? How otherwise? Will you be ruled by me? Aye, my lord, so you will not o'errule me to a peace. To thine own peace. If he now be re if he be now returned, as checking at his voyage, and that he means no more to undertake it, I will work him to exploit, now ripe in my device, under the which he shall not choose but fall. And for his death no wind shall breathe, but even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. My lord, I will be ruled, the rather if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. It falls right. You have been talked of since your travel much, and that in Hamlet's herring, for a quality wherein they say you shine. Your sum of parts did not together pluck such envy from him as did that one, and that in my regard, of the unworthiest sage, of the unworthiest siege. What part is that, my lord? A very ribbon in the cap of youth, yet needful too, for youth no less becomes the light and careless livery that wears it than settled age his sables and his weeds, importing health and graveness. Two months since, here was a gentleman of Normandy. I've seen myself and served against the I've seen myself and served against the French, and they can well on horseback, but this gallant had witchcraft in it. He grew unto his seat, and to such wondrous doing brought his horse, as had he been encorpsed and demi natured with the brave beast. So far he topped my thought that I, in forgery of shapes and tricks, come short of what he did. A Norman wast? A Norman? Upon my life, layman! The very same. I know him well. He is the brooch indeed and gem of all the nation. He made confession of you and gave you such a mastery report for art and exercise in your defense and for your rapier, most especially, that he cried out, "'Twould be a sight indeed if one could match you. "'The scrimers of their nation he swore "'had neither motion guard nor eye if you opposed them. <laughs> "'Sir, this report of his did Hamlet so envenom with his envy "'that he could nothing do but wish and beg your sudden coming "'or to play with him. Uh, "'Now out of this, what out of this, my lord?' "'Laertes, was your father dear to you? Are you like the painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Not that I think you did not love your father, but that I know love is begun by time. And that I see, in passages of proof, time qualifies the spark and fire of it. There, li there lives within the very flame of love a kind of wick or snuff that will abate it. And nothing is as at a like, uh, and nothing is as at a like goodness still. For goodness, growing to a pleurisy, dies in his own too much. That what we would do, we should do when we would. For this would changes and hath abatements and delays as many as there are tongues, our hands, and our accidents. And then this should is like a spendthrift sigh that hurts by easing. But to the quick, O oh, the Elser, Hamlet comes back. Uh, what would you undertake to show yourself your father's son indeed? More than words. To cut his throat in the church. 
No place indeed should murder sanctuaries. Revenge should have no bounds. But, good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet returned shall know you are come home. We'll put on those... We'll put on those, shall praise your excellence, and set a double varnish on the frame. The French, the double varnish on the frame the Frenchman gave you, bring you in fine together, and wager on your heads. He, being remiss, most generous, and free from all contriving, will not peruse the foils, so that with ease, or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated, and in a pass of practice, requite him for your father. I will do it, and for that purpose... I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank, so mortal that by dip and butt dip a knife in it, where it draws blood. No cataplasm so rare, collected from all simples that have virtue under the moon, can save the thing from death. This is but scratched with all. I'll touch my point with this contagion, that if I gall him slightly, it may be death. Mm, let's... For the think of this. Hmm. Way what convenience both of times and means may fit us to our shape. If this should fail, and that our drift look through our bad performance, twere better not assayed. Therefore, this project should have a back or a second <laughs> that might hold if this did but did blast in, uh, that might hold if this did blast in proof. Soft, let me see. Ah, oh. we'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. Ah, I had. When in your motion you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end, and that he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce, whereon but sipping, if he by chance escape your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. Enter the queen. How now, sweet queen? I need to take a drink. Okay. Here's the queen. One woe doth thread doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow. Your sister drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Where? There is a willow grows as a slant a brook. That shows his hoary leaves in the grassy stream. There, with fantastic garlands, did she make of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples, that liberal shepherds give a grosser name, but our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There, on the pendant ball, on the pendant bows, her coronet, weeds clay, um, clambering to hang, an envious sliver broke, when down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid-like, a while they bore her up, which time she chaunted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature native and endued unto that element. But long it could not be till that her garments heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her mel melodious lay to muddy death. Alas! Then she is drowned? Drowned, drowned. Too much of water hast thou, poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. But yet it is our trick, nature her custom holds. Let shame say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. A Jew, my lord, I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly doubts it. Exit Laertes. Let's follow Gertrude. How much I had to do to how much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore let's follow. Act five, scene one a churchyard. Enter two clowns with spades. These are the grave diggers, but in the play, Shakespeare called them clowns. Give me a sec. No. Oopsie. Got it. Oh, it's just up here. 
Be right back. Hold on, folks. Okay, I have returned. So again, two clowns with spades. <clears throat> Here we go. Here's the first clown. Is she? Wait. What kind of clown voice should I give him? May I should give the first clown something like a. Is she to be buried? Or, wait, is she to be buried? Uh, no, no. Um, oh, shoot. So many voices, so many voices. And I don't want to do something that really would, would hurt my voice. So I, I I think. I think I'll give him the voice, the first clown, like, talks like this. So, or talks like this. He thinks he's all that, but he talks like this. And the second clown shall be. Oh, there, there, there. He'll talk like that. The second clown will talk like that. The first clown will talk. Oh, that's a little hard on the voice. Let's go. First clown will talk like. Hello. Wait, no, no, no. First clown. Excuse me. Will be like, my, my. I'll talk like this. I'm so great. I can talk like this. Yeah, I'll talk like that. And the second clown will talk like. The second clown will talk like this. You talk like that. All right. So here's the first clown. Is she to be buried in Christian burial when she willfully seeks her own salvation? I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight. The crowner hath sat on her and finds it Christian burial. How can that be, unless she drowned herself in her own defense? Why, tis found so. It must be ser offendendo. It cannot be else. For here lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act. And an act hath three branches. It is to act, to do, and to perform. Our gal, she drowned herself wittingly. Nay, but here you, good man, Delver, give me leave. Here lies the water. Good. Here stands the man. Good. If the man... Go to this water and drown himself. It is, will he, nil he, he goes. Mark you that. But if the water come to him and drown him, he drowns not himself. Our gal, he that is not guilty of his own death, shortens not his own life. But is this law? I marryest Crowner's Quest Law. Will you... Had the truth of it, or will ya had the truth on't? If this had not been a gentlewoman, she should have been buried out, O Christian burial. Why, there thou sayest, and the more pity that great folks should have countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than they're even Christian. Come, my spade. There is no ancient gentleman but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold up Adam's profession. Was he a gentleman? He was the first that ever bore arms. Why, he had none. What, art a heathen? How dost thou understand the scripture? The scripture says Adam digged. Could he dig without arms? I'll put another question to thee. <clears throat> if thou answerest me not to the purpose, confess thyself. G go to. What is he that builds stronger than any than either the mansion? Oh, sorry. What is he that builds stronger than either the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? The the uh, the the, the, um, the gallows maker. For that frame outlives a thousand tenants. <laughs> I like thy wit well in good faith. The gallows does well, but how does it well? It does well to those that do ill. Now thou dost ill to say that. Now thou thou now, 
Thou dost ill to say the gallows is built stronger than the church. Our gal, the gallows may do well to thee. To it again. Come. Um, who built stronger than a mason, a shipwreck, or a carpenter? I tell me that, and unyoke. Uh, Mary, now I can tell. To it. Mash, I cannot tell. Enter Ham and Horatio, but from a distance. Cudgel thy brains no more about it, for your dull ass will not mend his pace with beating. And when you are asked this question again, say, a grave maker. The houses he makes last till doomsday. Go, get thee to Jochen. Fetch me a stoop of liquor. Exit the second clown. Now the first clown is digging. And sings. In youth, when I did love, did love, me thought it was very sweet to contract. Oh, the time for a my behove. Oh, me thought was nothing meet. Here's Hamlet. Has this fellow no feeling of his business that he sings at grave making? Custom hath this is Horatio. Custom hath made it in him a proper, a proper of easiness. Tis e'en so. The hand of little employment hath the dainter sense. The hand of little employment hath the daintier sense. But age with his stealing steps hath clawed me in his clutch and hath shipped me into the land, as if I had never been such. He throws up a skull. The grave digger. Or the clown, more accurately. That skull had a tongue in it, and could sing once. How the knave jowls it to the ground, as if it were Cain's jawbone that did the first murder. This might be the pate of a politician, which this ass now over now over offices, one that would circumvent God, might it not? It might, my lord. Or of a Courture, which would which could say good morrow, sweet lord. How dost thou, good lord? This might be my lord such a this might be my lord such a one that praised my lord such a one's horse when he meant to beg it. Might it not? Ay, my lord. Why even so? And now, my lady worms, chapless, and knocked about the mazard with a sexton spade. Here's fine revolution. And we had the trick to see it. Did these bones cost no more the breeding but to play at loggets with him? To draw, but to play at loggets with him? Mine ache to think on it. Here's the first clown again. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade for and a shrouding sheet. Oh, a pit of clay for to be made for such a guest is meet. The first clown throws up another skull. And there's another. Why may not that be the skull of a lawyer? Where he, where, where be his, where be his quidditz now? His quillets, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks. Why does he suffer this rude knave now to knock him about the scounts with a dirty shovel, and will not tell him of his actions of battery? Hmm. This fellow might be in. In time, a great buyer of land, with his statutes, his recognition, um, his recognizance, his recognizance, his fines, his double vouchers, his recoveries. Is this the fine of his fines and the recovery of his recoveries to have his fine pate full of fine dirt? Will his vouchers vouch him no more of his purchases and double ones too than the length and breadth of a pair of indentures? The very can veyances of his lands will scarcely lie in this box and must and must the inheritor himself have no more ha huh. not a jot jot more my lord is not parchment made of sheepskin i my lord and of calfskin too they are sheep and calves which seek out assurance in the, they are sheep and they, they are sheep and calves which seek out a, seek out assurance in that I will speak to this fellow. Uh, um, 
Uh, whose grave's this, sir? Mine, sir. Oh, a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meet. <laughs> I, I think it be thine indeed, for thou, thou liest in it. You lie out, aunt, sir, and therefore tis not yours. For my part, I do not lie in't, yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in't, to be in't, and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? No man, sir. Uh, what woman, then? For none, neither. Uh, who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, rest her soul she is dead. How absolute the knave is! We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. By the Lord, Horatio, these three years I have taken note of it. The age is grown so picked that the toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the courtier he galls his kibe. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days in the year, I came to it that day that our last king, Hamlet, overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? Cannot you tell? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born. He, that is mad, and sent to England. Ay, Mary, why was he sent into England? Why, because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there, or if he do not, it's no great matter there. Why? T'will not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. <laughs> How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, even with losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. I have been sexton here, man and boy, thirty years. How long will a man lie the earth ere he rot? Faith, if he not... Uh, faith, if he be not rotten before he die... As we have many pocky courses nowadays that will scarce hold the laying in, he will last you some eight year or nine year. A tanner will last you nine year. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade that he will keep out water a great while, and your water is a sore decayer of your horse on dead body. Here's a skull now. This skull hath lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A whore son. Mad fellows it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I not know. Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. A poured a flagon of rainish on my head, on my hen once, on my head once. This same skull, sir, was Yorick's skull. The king's jester. This? Wait, this? E'en that. Let me see. Hamlet takes the skull. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed. I know not oft. I know not how oft. <laughs> Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning? Quite chop fallen. Now get you to my lady, lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint in inch thick to his favor to this favor she must come make her laugh at that pretty horatio tell me one thing what's that my lord dost thou think alexander looked of this fashion in the earth e'en so and smelt so pah hammer puts the skull down e'en so my lord to what base uses we may return, Horatio? 
Why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a bunghole? Twere to consider curiosity to consider so. No faith, not a jot. But to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it. As thus Alexander died, Alexander was buried, Alexander returneth into dust. The dust is earth, of earth we make loam. And why of that loam whereto he was converted, might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. But soft, but soft, aside, here comes the king. Enter priest and company in procession, the corpse of Ophelia, Laertes and mourners following, king, queen, their trains, and company. The queen, the courtiers. Who is it that they follow? And with such maimed rites, this, this doth betoken the course they follow did this desperate hand for, for do its own life. Twas of some estate. Couch we a while and mark. Hamlet and Horatio retire. <clears throat> Here's Laertes. What ceremony else? <coughs> that is Laertes, a very noble youth. Mark. What ceremony else? Here's the priest. Her obsequity, her obsequious... Her, uh, her obsequies, her obsequies, so, I don't know where I'm sorry, have been as far enlarged as we have warranties. Her death was doubtful, and but that great command oversways the order, she should in ground unsanctified have lodged till the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flint, and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she is allowed her virgin rites, her maiden instruments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. And burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing age, requiem, and such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, I ministering angel, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? This is Hamlet. The fair Ophelia? Here's the queen, scattering flowers. Sweets to the sweet farewell. I hoped thou shouldest have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not have strewed thy grave. O oh, treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head, whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while, till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Laertes leaps into the grave, and holding Ophelia. Now, pile your dust upon the quick and dead, till of this flat a mountain you have made, to o'ertop old Pelion, or the skyish head of blue Olympus. Hamlet, advancing forward. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars, and makes them stand like wander-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dame. Hamlet leaps into the grave. Laertes grappling with Hamlet. The devil take thy soul! Thou prayest not well, I prithee thee, take thy fingers from my throat. For though I am not splenitive and rash, yet have I in me something dangerous, which let thy wit wiseness let which let thy wiseness fear. Away thy hand. Here's the king. Pluck them asunder. Hamlet! Hamlet! Oh, gentlemen! Oh, everyone's saying, gentlemen! Good my lord, be quiet! The attendants part them, and they come out of the grave. Why, I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids will no longer wag. Oh, my son, what theme? I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not, with all their quantity of love, make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? What wilt thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. For love of God, forbear him. 
Swoon, wait, swoons. Show me what what thou do, what thou do. Would weep? Would fight? Would fast? Would tear thyself? Would drink up isil? Eat a crocodile? I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine, to face me with leaping in her grave, be buried quick with her, and so will I? And if thou prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us, till our ground, singing, sin, uh, singeing his pate against the burning zone, make Osa like a wart. Nay, and thou till mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness, and thus a while the fit, the the filt, uh, is that filt? Or, yeah, okay. And thus a while the filt will work on him, anon as patient as the female dove. When that her golden couplets are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Hear you, sir? What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever, but it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. Hamlet exits. I pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. Horatio exits. Excuse me, the king is saying this to Laertes. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we, ha shall we see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be. Scene two, a hall in the castle. We'll stop right here with Hamlet. Woo! <clears throat> Hamlet's a long play, but I'm coming to the end. Okie dokie. How's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's doing well. The people here, the lurkers, everyone. Don't have to say anything. Just I'm just hoping you all are having a good old time. Okay. Mm. All righty. Well, I love Hamlet as much as the next, but woo, is that hard? All those voices sir, take its toll. Um, I was thinking of doing celebration appreciation corner today, but I'm thinking I'm a little, uh, a little, um, what's the word? I'm a little beat. So I think we'll just wrap up with a nice little song. And then I'll tell you all what's to come. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, here we go. <laughs> so again, I will use this background in the sword. And I will sing one last song for everybody. I'm, I apologize if I, if I don't get the lyrics down correctly. Um, you know what? Give me a sec. I'm going to sing this a few times to myself in privacy. So that I may hopefully give you a good performance. So let me just, I'm going to mute myself for a second, folks, for a second. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put on my BRB -B -B screen. That's, uh, that's probably better. There we go. I shall return very soon.
Okay, okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. I'm not going to do this one perfectly. I don't know this song very well, but it's a, it's a jazzy beat. And I want to sing this one. So. No, you don't, you stupid fucking ads. So let's let the ad pass, and meanwhile, let's uh, head on over to the next corner. Okay. Here is a popular anime song that hasn't been sung by me for various reasons. Well, for the reason that I, I don't really know the song, but <clears throat> let's um. I think I'm gonna get a different background for this one. Actually, this is a good background. So, now you know what? I am just going to let me turn off this background. Oops, wrong one. And have just the sword and the blackness and the void. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do this song. It's short, but uh, a little difficult. To Yoku, Nareru. Oh, hold on a second. My mic's not in the proper spot. So there you go, folks. That's the one I'm singing. Okay, here we go. So again. Tsuyoku nareru yoshita boku wo tsurete susume あ、いや。ドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドドド
Oh, I hate my sponsor so fucking much. Let me get it ready. Gotta prep it up, you know. They pay me to to promote them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh boy. I have no idea what I'm in for, but you know. Well, without further ado, folks, a word from tonight's stupid sponsor. Stupid sponsors. Okay, here we go. Now they're ready. Feeling down, not quite up to it. Do you believe you're worthless? Feel like giving up even though there is no up? Does it feel like the world looks down on you and down is all you've known? If you have any of these dark, depressing thoughts or feelings or the like, then you might just be suffering from erectile dysfunction. And a penis that can't get hard is no laughing matter. Every year, over 200 million men suffer from deflated junk and can't, and can't fix the problem for the remainder of their sad, hanging, slash shriveled lives. It's so sad! But since modern science and medicine can't solve the problems anytime soon or maybe ever, what can you do to feel like a strong, confident man again? The answer is within. Hi, my name is No Hard Blowhard, and I would like to present to all of you sad rubber hose gentlemen out there my breakthrough book for self-confidence. I call my book Pleasing Yourself Without Pleasing Yourself, a self-help book for the, erect for the erectilely dysfunctioned by No Hard Blowhard. I, like all of you squishy quatch boys out there, can't get it up. And I tried everything. And I mean everything. Drugs, surgeries, sex machines, sex parties, more drugs. No sex, no sex sex. And so much more belittling, unhealthy, body-wrecking things that <clears throat> nothing ever happened down there. And I felt worse and worse the more I tried to fight the impossible. In the end, my happiness mattered most. Not my ability to fuck with the spear slash dagger of triumph. So I needed to do some soul searching and find true, real, authentic ways to be happy, confident, and embrace myself for what I am. A man with a mighty sleepy penis. I needed to love my entire self, flaccid flaws and all. I even changed my name to reflect my strength and self-esteem. Let me go through some bullet points in my book. Pleasing Yourself Without Pleasing Yourself is an empowering 3,000-page, 500-chapter book describing in heartwarming detail the many ways you can attain soft, penal loving greatness. Chapters 1 through 100 help to build confidence at home. I ask you to strip to nothing and look into a full-body mirror and talk to your penis. Tell it that it's okay that it can't get hard like stone, it's okay that it's sad and flimsy and looks like it's slowly dying from emotional pains. Oh dear, that would that would hurt me. Oh, so hard to talk about this. Oh, it's bringing back so many memories. It's still hard, but I get along. Anyway, use use phrases. Use phrases like "soft is sweet." At least I can still pee. Nobody is born hard. <laughs> oh god, these help me so much. Use phrases like, these are beautiful balls, and I love noodles. These spiritual phrases will take root into your subconscious. Then the feelings of pride, confidence, and understanding for all things limpy will become beacons of joy and empowerment within your mind and soul. After we feel confident with our doughy privates in private, then we can move on to our, into, um, I'm sorry, let me say that again. Huh. Oh, I can only do this in one take. After we feel confident with our doughy privates in private, 
Then we can move on to embracing our tragic fate to the world. Chapters 101 to 300 will teach you how to talk openly and proudly about your waning wiener. You'll learn how to walk, what pants to wear, what clothes to wear, when not to wear underwear, and more. You'll even be asked to say phrases out loud in public areas like, My dead penis is amazing! I can't do it with you, but I can love you more than he who can. I love limp! You can laugh, but I won't cry. I love my sleeping one eye! If the cops are called for public indecency, don't worry. My book also teaches you how to run like the wind. Also remember, the wind is cool and not hard. It's the wind, and it's more powerful than any cock in the world. The wind is the embodiment and inspiration for my name. For the wind is a no hard blow hard. And that's true power and wisdom. And this is just a taste of true happiness with limpness. Please, do yourself and your poor impotentness a favor and pick up a copy of my book. Remember, you're only as soft as you feel. So feel hard and feel proud to be soft. Pick up a copy of Pleasing Yourself Without Pleasing Yourself, a self-help book for the erectilely dysfunctioned by No Hard Blow Hard. <laughs> Pick them up at creepy bookstores or porn shops near you, or online. If you would like to see me in person, on the 215th of Uxt, Nem of Uxt Nember, I'll be doing a book signing at the Super Super Sad Men's Club at that rundown building near the dumpster that smells like hell. Thank you for your time. And may the lack of force be with you. Whoa! Okay, then! Okay, this guy was trying to help, but honestly, it just came across really stupid and creaky and creepy, and, um... I might feel for the guys who... I don't know, I don't know, I just think that was really stupid. I don't, I don't know. I won't, I, I mean, he gave me a free copy of that book. I, I never looked at the title, but I guess I should have. Yep. Pleasing Yourself Without Pleasing Yourself. A self-help book for the erectilely dysfunctioned. By, yeah, no hard blow hard. Jeez. Okay, that was probably one of the nicer responses I've gotten, but it's, it was very <laughs> ridiculously presented. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Oh, I'm not going by the dumpster that smells like hell. He can do his book signing all he likes. I'm not going there. I think I'll just use this book as like, I don't know, a, a door stump or something. Anyway, folks, let me uh, move on to show you what we have upcoming in my show today. For my next show. my So, Friday. This Friday, June the 25th. Friday at 6 p.m. PST. Kinnear Fig will be my guest. He's a wonderful guy. I want you to check him out. He's great. Um... So tune in for that. And I have an announcement to make right now. So um, there are some things that's happening in my life right now um, that I have to take real, real special care of. Uh, it's nothing serious, um, like like health-wise, mental-wise, anything bad, but it's something I love. It's like a, a passion of mine, even before VTubing, and it's coming to the fold. And as a result, I have to like, rework schedules and plan a lot of different things. Uh, so after Fig's guest spot... I will be taking pretty much the entire month of July and the, con and the continuing days of June off to plan my show out in better detail, create new videos, just to make things a lot more efficient on my end. That way I can maintain my passion as well as VTubing at the same time. So I need a whole month to do that. Uh, the bee is working with me, bless his soul, and um, he's just wonderful. The best brother in the world. So uh, I will be taking a, a one-month break. I'm going to announce it again during Fig Stream, but um, since I'm announcing it here right now, I'm also going to put it on Twitter. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for coming, folks. I hope you enjoyed your time here. I know I did. Um, let's see. Shall we raid someone today? Let's see. Let me see who's online. Yeah. Let's see who's online. Wait, hold on. I'll be right back. Let me see who's online.
All righty. <clears throat> so speaking of Fig, I'll give you all a taste of what he's like. We're going to raid Fig. So let's get some raid messages going, folks. I gotta, okay, there we go. So let's get that started. We're gonna raid Fig and say hello. Thank you all so much for coming. And of course, as I always say to my viewers before we tap out for the night, stay cool, stay sharp. Jeep out to raid. <laughs>